Well, I didn't expect to see Josh here. I I I thought I was going to only talk to Leaf, but you know, uh, I'm I'm always good to talk to another person uh, for this conversation. Uh, well, no intro. It just started off like this. Uh, well, Leaf and Josh, thank you so much for taking the time during this, uh, and also congrats on taking down T1. You know, opening series, opening dub, getting it done, and just coming out on top. You know, congrats on that. And so, obvious starter with this interview as you are familiar with how are you guys feeling how are you guys taking in this result i'm very tired i'm very relieved that we won there all right short and nothing concise. elaborate really <laughs> yeah i mean it was it was a stressful game um we didn't expect it to go to the distance like that in fact i thought it would be a 2-0 given that, given how strong our icebox normally is um unfortunately T1 just hit the gas and just did not stop at A, hitting A 12 times in a row. Um, we threw many, many solutions or ideas on how to defend it. Um, and we came up short there. So yeah, it came down to the wire, given that like we had to do a little comeback um, from 9-3 on a Lotus. But yeah, I can understand why Nathan is tired here. Yeah, as you said, uh, putting now going over to you, Leaf. You know, with T1 just hitting spam, go A time and time again. I just want to know from your perspective how difficult was that for you, you know, just trying to uh, counter that, you know, as T1 just repeatedly started doing that kind of stuff on you guys. Um, I wouldn't say like hopeless. I mean, I think we had a lot of solutions, but it was just like kind of like tedious and just very annoying. Like, I think all of us kind of feel the same way. Um, you know, we, we had solutions, we had ideas, we had, you know, some man advantages and stuff like that, but it just ended up like nothing working and they just hit all their shots. So yeah, it was definitely very, very annoying. Yeah. To add to that. Oh, sorry. No, no, you go ahead. Yeah. Um, I, I felt like some of the things that fell off was, um, like our, our coordination within the setups. So even though we had good solutions, um, like they were just hitting their shots and we weren't able to trade effectively. Or like he said, like when we get the man advantage, we couldn't like keep it. And uh, they just they just found ways to just keep attacking the site. Now I want to touch a little bit on Icebox. And of course, 13-1, I mean, not a good showing, <laughs> not a good way to, 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 to go from map one win in Breeze to that. I mean... For any one of you to, to answer, I mean, what was the one thing that kind of went flat for you guys in that map? Um, I mean, he kind of just touched on it, but just basically like coordination and just comms and stuff like that. And just also like aim, like individual aim uh, compared to the other team. That's it. That's just basically the map summarized. Yeah. And I would say like, I would say some indecision on the fights that we would want. Um, because like if we 2v1 aside, like holding left or holding right, like sometimes that was confusing for us. So that that led to unfortunate deaths for some of the players. So, um, but yeah, like the indecision, I think. Yeah, and even so, like uh, that then started a momentum that it, it sort of felt like you know T one was on the verge of winning the series. You know, going up nine three in the first half of Lotus, but then you guys came back and just did the comeback. You know. Extending it to overtime, winning it in the first two um, opportunities, first two rounds of that extra time. Well, I mean, how did that happen? You know, what what, what was what was what was what what did you kind of say, Josh? You know, amidst the that kind of time frame, if in the times you were able to do that, to sort of now spark the team's comeback, and for you, Leaf, well, following off of, of that, um, how do you guys then execute that? So um, after map two, I kind of just told the players like, "Hey, there's gonna be some uncomfortable troops. Uh, we need we need to get our act together in these moments." Um, and it, it kept falling off the way we were microcomming within each other and uh, like coordinating fights, supporting teammates, like the supporting the guy next to you. Um, and fortunately, like they they didn't have the the best start in the next map, but I can tell there's an uptick in energy and our uh, efforts to coordinate now like once we figured out like how they're playing their defense um we started to string some rounds together and then um that big big uh clutch from you on 
just around the next half. That sparked that sparked a belief that like we were in it. I mean, he said it. Yeah. Uh, heroics and like, because every game, <clears throat> especially when you're coming back, is definitely just going to have heroics. Um, you know, I think they did too, even when they were in the lead and stuff like that. But um, I think we were pretty decisive and pretty together. I mean, there was still some rounds where it was kind of hard and kind of shaky. And even like, I don't really think the game should have even went OT. I think that round where like the fade eye scanned two of us at B and the, when we were sticking the bomb, like I swear we would have won that round. But yeah, it is what it is. And I think we just kept on and I. You know, that that play uh, that Josh mentioned, I think it encapsulates, it ca- encapsulates the sort of performance that you displayed, you know, today against T1. You know, um, c- continuing your form from the domestic side for the international side. I just want to ask you about how you viewed your performance. You know, what do you feel just kind of went well for you? Um... The stage felt very nice. The dust were very nice, so that helps me a lot because of the way that I play. Um, I don't know. I was just kind of shooting people and getting some. I don't know how I died sometimes, or like I don't know how I didn't die sometimes. But you know, I just I don't know. It just felt good for most of the game. Icebox just felt like as a collective unit, we were just all kind of out of it. So, um, but yeah, the other two maps felt good. And Josh, how good does that must feel? You know, to have a player like Leaf just. Perform well, just kick ass whenever an opp- a chance arises for him to do that, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I mean, I feels great to have someone like uh, Nathan on the team that can carry us to uh, do these moments. Um, and like, keep in mind, we're still a very young roster, right? And Nate's Nate probably has the most experience out of like the five, right? Sure. So, yeah, I mean, like shining, th- shining through those moments, kind of leading by example. Like, hey, you know, you can you can perform at this level for the rest of the guys. Like it did. Um, like I said, like spark spark a belief in us that like we can make this comeback. We can close this out. And how do you feel this result then plays into just the team's performance or uh, potential and form going forward? You know, now as you await your opponent uh for a chance to progress to the playoffs and i asked this for either of you to answer um i mean i think it was kind of a wake-up call for everybody um good and bad where like we can easily compete with some of the teams that are here um obviously t1 isn't a first seed um from the region but they're still a pretty good team and they're still very good individually um and then the bad is that you know we didn't play too good and we got punished hard for it and if we didn't have, you know, better individuals in some rounds and better individual rounds and we're playing a better team, then it very easily could have been even 0-2 or 2-1 against us. So um, I'm hoping, you know, I know for me, like, I'm going to try and take what I can get from that. Um, but I hope for everybody else, it just makes it so that we just are a lot more on top of it and also just not like, like imposter syndrome or anything like that. Yeah, I, I echo. Um what Nate said, I think it did, it, it did expose us a little bit, um, given like how, how strong these teams are, even a third seed, um, from T1. I think, uh, there's, there's some sloppiness that we need to fix. We got to make sure some of our like ice box needs to be like revamped a little bit, um, coming to the next game. Uh, so, so we are going to see another, another instance of G2 ice box, right? Yep. Yeah, that's not going away. Perfect, perfect. I, I love, I love the confidence. Um, uh, one more question because uh, I seem to be running out of time. Just sort of more focusing on how the transition has been from playing in in Los Angeles in qualifying for Shanghai and then making the trek to China and just having to um, adapt, get used to jet lag or try to get out of jet lag and stuff stuff of that nature. Uh, for you guys, how have you guys kind of been adapting to just uh, the frantic schedule and just having to go from one location on one side of the world to the other? Um, jet lag was fine for me. Uh, frantic schedule is not the worst because if I'm doing stuff and it's like one after another, it's not that bad. But yeah, jet lag wasn't bad for me. Um, I've been pretty comfortable here in terms of, you know, everything. Um yeah, I don't know. It just felt pretty good for me. 
it's comfortable here honestly yeah. it's a little hot but yeah other than that it's pretty fine but you know it's just humid I for sure well uh as someone that that hates humidity i don't like what you just said but you know at, at competitor competitive wise you know it is a definitely a, a good thing to to experience you know uh given the fact that you are there in the first place and so um that said i'm gonna wrap up the interview right here really appreciate you guys taking the time and just talking to me for uh, another interview uh this season best of luck goes to you guys for the next encounter thank you thank you